Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're looking at making a hand-painted blunderbuss or thunder gun game object. It will be a low poly model and only one texture so great for games but also really great fun to create. In this session I'll be going through basic retopology of sort of hard surfaces like this and how scruffy and non-uniform you can go with game objects especially if you're trying to optimize them, where you can have overlap, where you need to join objects together. So hopefully this will kind of answer some of those questions you may have. If you like what I do and want to make a full game ready character then take a look at my character course and take a look in the description for my other courses, other playlists on this channel for lots of educational content. The reference image for this model and the model itself, unpainted that is, is available. Again, follow the links in the description. Now it's important to say before we start that this is retopology for painted game assets. So the main thing we're looking for is the silhouette of the model. All the crevices, the highlights and things like that, they're going to be painted on. So we can be quite scruffy with our mesh as long as we have that outline silhouette. Okay, so here's where we got up to last time and I'm going to edit the mesh so I can sort of join it together seamlessly rather than having just simple overlaps like this. And like I say, this isn't absolutely necessary. It is more optimal, but you'd be surprised what you can get away with in game engines. We might end up making lots of triangles and things like that. The reason we stick to quads where we can is because it's easier to model because you can do things like grabbing loop cuts, do subdivision surface modifiers. But when it comes to game engines, everything is reduced to triangles anyway. So it doesn't matter if you are actually using triangles within your mesh. Okay, so I'll come close in here. And I find the easiest way to do this is get out your knife tool and start matching things up. So K for knife tool, we'll bring out the knife and you simply left click to add a vertex. And I can make a cut in areas like this across here close to where the other mesh is. And I'm actually just going to go through objects like this. It's absolutely fine all the way around. I know there's a vertex very close there, but I'll join them together in a second. So I'm going all the way around where these two objects meet and just cutting into the mesh. Now this one I've joined to the actual vertex that I can see there. So I can press E to restart my cuts over here. And I'm just left clicking all the way around so that I can cut the faces off and join them together later. We've got a mirror on so I can press enter there and obviously it will happen on the other side and you can see all the cuts I've made all around our shape there. Okay, now if I press L over the top of this model, that will select anything that's kind of linked to it. But remember that was a separate model at one point to this one, so it will only select that. I can then press Shift H to hide everything but selected and I can go in and start getting rid of some of these faces. So these are faces that aren't going to be seen, so there's certainly no point in having them. But also we'll tidy up the other edge so that we can attach it to the other model. So I can select them all and press delete. And faces. We don't need this end face here either, so I'll delete that. And I think we're just about there. What I'm going to do now is just do a little bit of a tidy up. So one to go to vertex mode, and I can select vertices and press GG to slide them into another one. However, I need to have this button pressed here so they auto merge when they meet each other. Otherwise, with this one, it hasn't actually linked to the other one. So I'll undo that, press this button, and then GG, slide it in, and now when I grab that, you can see it's all one vertex. And I can get this one, GG, slide it into there, and these, and slide them into there. Okay, it's relatively tidy in other places. There is a triangle there, that's fine triangle there but then there's an end gone here which is very awkward and that might cause you problems in a game engine so we can get our knife tool and cut up to here and across to there you could go all the way around if you want to keep it to quads it makes lots of extra faces and you don't really need them okay I'll just quickly check around and see if there's any other end gones I think we're all okay okay so I'll press alt H to bring back the rest of my mesh deselect all with alt A and now I can come into this mesh here and start editing that. So with my knife tool, I can come in here and just on the outside of these different shapes, I can use my knife tool to cut into it. Now, if you're going a long way around, it might be a good idea to go to a certain point and just press enter to select it and then start again with the knife tool and go around the last bit. Because otherwise, if you accidentally right click or something, you'll lose all your cuts. Okay, so I've got those cuts in there. And again, I can deselect all, press L over this to select it, and then Shift H to hide everything else. And I can start going in and deleting some faces. So make sure you're in face mode with three and start 
deleting those extra faces that we don't need. So delete faces, and do we need to tidy anything up? Well, there's some awkward end gons here. So what I can do is go to vertex mode and select these two and press J to join. And these two J to join, and we've got a quad base mesh there. How about that? <laughs> this one, GG to edge slide. This one and this one, J to join. That's quite a long, thin triangle. I don't like those much because sometimes in texture painting, that can cause problems, really long, thin triangles like that. I'll leave it there for now and see how we get on. But if we needed to, I could always cut down here, from here, down to there instead. But I'll undo that. So we've got our quad base mesh that everybody loves. In here to here, J to join. And this one's a bit more messy. So what we can do, I think, is put a cut in here and across to here and a join in here. So J to join. And that one will have a triangle, J to join. And this one, we can actually GG to edge slide and even them out a little bit more. We could even have a little bit more of a curve going up here if we wanted to. So that comes in slightly, but it's not really necessary. It won't be that noticeable. Okay, let's Alt H and bring back everything else. And now we can see a gap between our models. That's okay is what we're going to do is I'm going to select one of these vertices and I'm going to merge it with the other one. And there's a quick way of doing this. You can go up to the top here, choose snapping, and then snap to vertex, just there. Now, I'll just zoom in on this a bit, and then G to grab, and you can move it to the closest one. I've got auto merge on, just there, so they will merge together. So G to grab, merge them together. And I can just go around slotting them together nicely. Ah, now there's one there that's not fitting together with the other one. So I'm going to need an extra cut in here. So bring up my knife tool, bring that down there, press enter, and then grab that into the other one. Now if you look at this bit, it's not very clean topology and I'm not liking it very much. And now I come to think of it, we don't even need that one there, so I can press GG, slide that across. That's a bit better. Let's have a look at the shape and see if we can do anything with it. I think I'd feel a bit more comfortable if we had a cut from here to here. So I can select both, and press J to join, and then into edge mode and dissolve both those edges. So dissolve edges there, control X is the shortcut for that. And this one actually I can slide into there. So it's a little bit cleaner now. We have got an end gone here, and I can just sort that out by joining these two. Let's just come out of edit mode and see what that looks like. You can see that line of a triangle there, which I think could be possibly problematic. So I think I will dissolve that, Control X, and K for knife tool. And we could even have an extra cut in here, going all the way through, and then we can have more of a curve if we want. That one I can slide across, I think it looks better, and that one I can slide across. And let's take a look at what that's looking like, and that's much better. Okay, so it might seem like a bit of a hideous process, all this pulling around and adjusting, but it really isn't too bad once you get the hang of it. And I'm probably missing things that I could make a bit neater, but like I say, you'd be surprised how little difference it makes. Okay, so that's fairly neat. I feel like this one goes up a little bit, these two here, not sure why that is. Probably did something a bit silly there. So let's just bring those down roughly in line with the other ones. Those ones as well, I'll go to X-ray mode, make sure we're getting everything we need to there. Oh, I've still got snapping on, so turn that off and bring that down. Now my original drawing actually curves around here a bit, so we could bring these down if we wanted to. G then Z and have it curved that little bit. Let's see what that looks like. Well, it seems to work, so we can stick with that. Okay, so we've successfully joined probably the most tricky bit together. Now we need to join this bit. So once again, round with the knife tool. And we have got this slight issue here. So I'll do this one at the top first, and I'll just come around here like this, and I'll cut it off there. Then I'll just follow it round until the end there. Press L over this, now they're joined together. We're seeing that one as well, but that's absolutely fine. We can then Shift H, hide the rest, and then come in and start cutting it up a bit. So three to go to face mode and start deleting some of these faces. And Alt H to unhide. Okay, so we've got a bit of a gap there, and I'm going to select this area of the mesh and press H to hide. Oh, let's do that in wireframe mode. So select all these, 
H to hide and then I can kind of see what I'm doing down here a little bit more. We don't need these faces so I can just get rid of those. Is there on the inside. And somehow we need to link these up a little bit. Now I could have a sort of gap coming down here where we see the bolt or I could just join them together because we won't really see much and then sort of paint it in with shadows around there. There's several options really. I think the easiest is to just actually join them up. So let's see what the differences are in the mesh. I'll hide this top bit as well. Okay, so I'll press two and that face and that face I'll fill with F. That face and that face I'll fill with F and I'll make a face in here as well. There's a fair bit of cutting around, adding faces and just generally sort of sorting the shape out and you kind of get used to this with practice. I'll come out of wireframe mode because it's difficult to see. What I'm gonna do is cut down here up to that one and I think what I'm gonna to have to do is bring this one back this way and then have some sort of faces in here to here, F to fill and here up to the top here. So they are joined together when they get to that point but only at that point. So it should be all right, I think. Let's Alt H and bring everything back and see how that's looking. It's a little bit messy around the bottom, which we'll tidy up in a second, but I think that's probably going to work. Okay, this edge here, G then X. Turn off snapping, G then X. So just sliding that back so there's no holes. And we need to cut in here for the bolt. And I'll cut across there because that's where our shape finishes and come down to here. A little bit messy, but we just go into face mode. We can delete some faces and start tidying things up. I'll come into my shape here, turn snapping on again, pull them into each other, and it's not too bad. Okay, it's a bit messy in here, so I'm going to delete these faces here, and then just link these up, and GG to edge slide there. Bring that one in, that one in. I've got this extra face that we need in here, so this one and this one, F to fill, we've got a face there. Okay, so it might be a little bit scruffy, but it's generally okay. It can be awkward in tight spaces like that, but you kind of just move things around, add things in, and see how you get on. Remember, it's okay to have triangles. You might end up with a bit of a messy mesh that you can kind of tidy up a bit later. So just join these ones up now. Those two, select them both, J to join. This one's the tricky one in there. And we're good. Okay, we've got a bit of distortion just here, as you can probably see as this face goes around there. So we can grab this one, GG, to edge slide. And we can grab these as well, GG to edge slide, and just give them a little bit of room. So GG. So it's not completely flat down there. It comes out, the bottom comes out this way slightly. That surprisingly helps quite a lot when you do that sort of thing. Got a non-manifold face there, so I'll just join these up. It's very scruffy in this bit, but it will work. Just need to come inside the mesh and delete the inside faces that won't be seen. I'll join those two up there. So we haven't got a big end on there. Now that might have looked really confusing and it's a bit untidy, but it will work just fine. It doesn't have to be precisely the same as mine, just as long as they're joined together and it still keeps its kind of silhouette like this because we'll be painting on all the details anyway. Okay, so that's these really awkward shapes linked together. Yes, we've still got some overlap with this bolt here these areas here but there's very little point in joining them up they can overlap slightly and it's not going to make a big difference to performance the extra polygons it would take to join in these small objects it really just isn't worth it it's far better to leave them as separate objects so that's all our shape joined together so we can get ready for texture painting so once again thanks for all the support thanks to those that watch an advert donated or signed up to my patreon questions and thoughts comment below thanks for watching and i'll see you next time